our very own Michelle Brown, who is over at Jester Park right now to talk about the situation when it comes to our park. <laughs> Good morning, guys. We are out here at Jester Park this morning. I have Heidi Anderson here with me from the Polk County Conservation. And we are, of course, we're going to talk about hiking or camping, which is a very popular uh, activity for the 4th of July yes. uh, upcoming holiday. But we also want to address flooding because that is affecting campsites yes. as we can see behind us here yes and different parks. absolutely so here at jester park we have four campgrounds and two of them are flooded currently so um, right behind us is campground two and uh, sailorville lake is high enough right now that um, this is completely underwater so um, the number of campsites we have here are uh, limited normally we would have a full full park for the holiday uh, week so how does that fourth. affect people who have made reservations for the sites that are right because usually the parks are pretty full yes so for the folks that had sites reserved here they've been notified and money's been refunded to them but we still have um, some campsites that are in our campground that is not flooded okay. um, that the, those folks are fine and so um, some of the campsites here are reservable and some of them are first come first serve. So um, for those sites, you just kind of have to either call ahead of time to see if there's any open or take a drive through the park and see if there's anything uh, available because people are kind of pulling out at different times mm -hmm. uh, with July 4th being on a Wednesday. Of the week, yeah. It's, it's kind <laughs> of uh, an odd week. Um, normally when it's closer to a weekend, it's, you know, we're just packed and everybody's here for the duration, so. Tell people about when, when you are wanting to make a reservation or yes. check into what parks are, any closures, right. updates due to the flooding and so forth. Give, there's a great resource for yes. people that they may not be aware right, of. Right, exactly. So mycountyparks.com is a wonderful website that not only lists um, our campsites that are reservable, but any county park in the state of Iowa. You can reserve a camp uh, campsite in northwest Iowa if you want. Uh, you can plan ahead or in southeastern Iowa. So you can reserve campsites on this website. You can reserve cabins as well. Some people really nice. enjoy the cabin route mm -hmm. um, and shelters or other kind of rental facilities. But uh, you can sort on my county parks by county uh, or you can just say, hey, I want to find a campsite. And so you can filter out um, the options by that as well. Okay, and when you go to reserve your campsite, because I did that, and I grew up, my family owned campgrounds and so yes. forth, but when you go, it's different when you're actually going to places you're not familiar with. Right. There's different terminology that you may yes. not be aware of, well, you know, where you can drive in right next to your site or if you're yes. to hike in. Talk a little bit about that. Sure. So um, sometimes campsites are re referred to as electric sites, and those are for your RV and campers that you are just going to back your RV in and you've got electrical and water hookups um, and so those in general are turn, referred to as electrical campsites. Okay. Um, now the primitive campsites. Which or, is way we're kind of saying let's yes, this way okay. a little bit. And, yeah so this area would be considered a primitive campsite or a non-electric site so there's no uh, water and electric hookups here perfect for tents um, to be set up and uh, you can just back your your car right basically to the site and unload all your gear. Um, and there are a few campsites behind us that sometimes you have to walk and carry your gear mm -hmm. just a little bit farther. Um, and then there are backpacking um, t campsites where you're either having to hike in, um, you know, a several miles or even you know, maybe it's a half mile into your campsite or maybe if it's a hundred yards. So you need to be prepared for that then. So right. what do people typically do? They yes. do like they have a wagon, do they Yes. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you can just pull your wagon um, and load all your things in there so um, you don't have to carry things quite Quite Talk so about far. pricing and, and yes. what, does, what does it cost to reserve yes. a site now? Well, here in our Polk County Parks, uh, our non-electric sites cost $15 a night and our electric sites uh, run about $20 a night. Now, if you reserve them ahead of time on My County Parks, there is an additional fee tacked on. I think the electric sites run $23 a night and the non-electrics are $18 a night. So there's just a little extra cost for that uh, reservation assurance mm -hmm. that you're going to have a campsite when you want to come out camping. And a lot of the um, places will have like a map so you can kind of yes. get a feel for, because I, I think your location when you set up, you know, especially yes. when you're tenting, it, it makes a big difference, whether you're lots of trees around, if you're by a body of water. And exactly. And on the website, most campsites have a, a photo so you can kind of see the area but absolutely when I'm tent camping 
I want to know how many trees are around, if it's shaded um, or not, uh, you know, what direction is the sun going to come up in the morning, when is it going to be sunny or shady, and that type of thing. So all things that I kind of think about. MyCountyParks.com, great yes, resource. Yes, absolutely. Now, now camp, to go camping, it can be a lot of work. Yes, it can, <laughs> to actually. To ready and to it pack can. and so forth, but we want it to be, that kind of defeats the purpose. So yes. talk a little bit about how to keep it simple and a little more stress-free yes. so that it isn't as, because it doesn't have to be a big no, production. No, The basics you need are your tent, um, sleeping bag, um, and I have a tub mm -hmm. that I bring and I have in my basement. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, my tub's right over here. And it's got kind of my essentials. You know, I've, I've got my tablecloth I throw in there, cooking utensils. I've got some pots in there. Uh, some fire starters um, are in there as well. And just matches, lantern, um, just all the things that the you, common things that you right that you need use. um i i have in there so when i'm ready to go camping i just pull out the tub i grab my tent grab my sleep, sleeping bags and then um depending on what i want to cook cooking's a whole nother uh, thing to think about mm -hmm. what kind of food you might want to bring when you go camping so i have some extra supplies for 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 cooking uh, let's focus the tent yes the, it took us just as much time to put this yes. tent up as it did the bigger yes. tent. because <laughs> so yeah. they really are they're, they're yes. designed now to yes. be a simple Yes, setup. exactly. Most tents really are fairly simple. This one obviously is a smaller. This is a two-person tent that um, I take backpacking with me. Um, two poles, you just slide them in the sleeves and and it's, and it's up. Simple now, bedding. You know, my mom yes. used to, we packed pillows. She'd have a broom. Oh. She'd have sheets. It was a yes. big production. Yes. Get a good sleeping bag. That's really yes. all you need, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> and then there are larger tents uh, that, this is a family size tent over here. And uh, this one, uh, you could sleep, you know, four to six people in there. And um, so again, this one was fairly simple to set up. Again, two poles, we just popped it up. And, uh, you know, some people enjoy air mattresses mm -hmm. or cots even um, to throw in there with your sleeping, sleeping bags uh, as well. So depending on um, how big your, your family is, um, you know, what are your needs? Uh, there's tents of all shapes and sizes and for you. they're weather resistant, yeah. so if the yes. weather kind of yes. gives you troubles a little bit of the time yes, that you're camping, exactly. no problem. Yep. And you mentioned um, having some cooking utensils because that's obviously a big part of, yes. of camping. Is there anything in regards to, do you have to bring your own firewood? Um, is it better to use charcoal? Talk a little bit about the, the cooking process. Yes. This, this is a great opportunity for you to try out all kinds of different gadgets and, and campfire cooking so you yes. can, you know, things you can't normally do at home. Right. So it makes it you kind got, of fun. This has got pie irons here. You can do all kinds of fun sandwiches in there. You've got your regular camp stove. Um, you can cook, uh, you know, a griddle or skillets type food there. Um, I've got a Dutch oven. Um, you can cook in the Dutch oven or you can cook right over the fire. Because most uh, of your campsites are going to be set up with some sort of a place to have a fire or cook yes. out, right? Almost all campsites have a fire ring of some kind. And so um, I don't want people to think, oh, I just have to cook hot dogs, you know. There's so much more you can cook and, and do uh, when you're camping. But as far as firewood goes, uh, it's important to get the firewood at the campground that uh, you're camping at. Okay. Um, and part of the reason for that has to do with emerald ash borer. Um, and it's an invasive beetle that is spreading across Iowa and they attack ash trees. And so uh, these little beetles spread, um, they think primarily through firewood as people transport firewood um, uh, around. So to help prevent the spread of EAB, that's what we call the emerald ash borer for short, is to, to get your firewood locally. Um, so uh, most campgrounds are going to have firewood yes, available for people. Right. Okay. Yes, right, yes, yep. That's a good thing to know, because I'd probably throw it in there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Pull it from home, you know, it's one yes. last thing you have yes. to deal but with. But of course, but... Um, you know, charcoal is, I mean, if I'm going to cook with my Dutch oven, mm -hmm. I want to have some charcoal. Uh, but of course, you can even roast marshmallows over charcoal if you, if you want. Um, so it's depending on, again, what you want to cook and what food that you're interested in. You know, firewood versus charcoal, um, you know, they each mm -hmm. have their, their uses. Well, we're going to be uh, talking a little bit more about camping here in uh, one of the upcoming segments. And we're going to talk about maybe some of the activities that you can do yes. while you're camping because it's really that one time where you can get out and have like no distractions yes. and relax yes. and 
uh, have a lot of fun with that. So yeah. when we come back, uh, Heidi's going to share with us some fun things to do while we're camping to keep us entertained. There you go. Yay. Well, some great advice this morning. The world of